Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you are watching this, this is the Wix online meeting number 47, November 13th. We're getting towards the end of the year. Uh, eventually we're going to be start talking about if we're going to skip any of these meetings as people disappear for holidays and stuff. Bob and I are usually around, but you know we'll see what happens. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that are unable to be here. And as always, those of you that are watching this on YouTube uh, later, you can leave comments and we will answer them. Maybe in that meeting, maybe in comments, or maybe in the next meeting. On to the agenda. I have the standard agenda. We're going to do the triage and whip review. Um, and then we'll do uh, the open discussion on progress, which hopefully is shorter and shorter. And then questions and comments. I think maybe after this week, the open discussion on progress will be done. All right. That means we're off to go to the triage and the whip review. And of course, I forgot to bring up the whip URL, so I always have to go get that. Uh, but we have plenty of bugs today, right? Good stuff? Yes? Yeah, a few. Yeah, all right. All right, I have that URL over there now. Down to the bottom. All right. Wrong binding in IS site. This is a very old bug. Yeah, two years old. I think someone probably just said it still doesn't work because essentially it's a result. And then, oh, yes, I remember this, and I duped it. That scroll bar needs a little bit more room there. But anyway, yes, yeah, so, yeah, this was interesting. I remember seeing this bug and come in. This guy actually used the same name on our bug track again, which is really helpful. Thank you. And yeah. opened another bug that was this bug after this guy opened this bug, and, and I basically duped it to this. And so if you want, you can leave a comment on here, and he'll start getting notifications. Otherwise, this guy and all these other people, including Bob, is getting notifications about, yeah, this still doesn't work, and yeah, someone needs. will have to dig into what's going on when you do the IP address equals star. So I think this should stay open in 3x, and be awesome if someone wants to fix it. Works Agreed? for me. All right. Yep. Sean's all back there, quiet. It's like I have the power to speak. When should I do it? Um. Uh. Document how to include NetFX for EDIS packages and how to seems reasonable. Yeah, I just reopen or oh, sorry. Oh, go to three ten. Okay. Yeah, we'll take uh, this so if we rebuild three nine, which I guess we did not. Exactly. All right. Cool. So yeah, move it three ten, and we're all good to go, right? But works for me. Is someone going to fix it? Do we have someone to assign it to? Or what? We don't. Although it might fall into a bucket. My bucket for uh, .NET 4.6, which they announced yesterday. Yay! Or something. Yes, something. Just one more thing to push. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. All right. Sounds good to me. Um, so you'll take this then in 3.10? Sure. All right. Yay. Sean's like, I can speak, but I'm not going to talk now. I don't want that bug. Um, all right. Burn does not generate error if package names, names collide. Yeah, this one. We should fix this. Not in 3.9, though. No. Oh, we're going to have a bunch of those, aren't we? Yeah. No, we um, yeah, we really should do this. Oh, this is the the target. Yeah, yeah. Target names. Yeah, you know, figures out and says, "Hey, you know this this thing is going to stomp on that thing, and you're not going to get what you want in the end." Yeah, that seems reasonable. Yeah, so we should do that. Um, um, right. <laughs> are we going to take this? I, I guess three X then, because nobody's stepping yeah. up to do it. All yeah, right, 3x we'll is good. Problem installing application in component services with .NET DLL in the GAC. Uh, Complus. Complus, yeah. And if you try to put in the GAC, it's not in the GAC until very much later. Yes. It worked in 2x. I don't know why it would work on 2x and not 3x, because it's not like we changed anything. 
Ugh, wow, Wix two. Well, I mean that's old enough that you know it could be due to any number of changes in Fusion and whatever, many wow. things. But that's assuming that he didn't just go from two to three and it's just on the exact same stuff. But also, yeah, true. Yeah, well, yeah, it'd be great if someone hunt this down and fix it. We should put in three X. I mean, is this anything to do with the uh, with the uh, four O versus two O Gax? It could. Who knows? Yeah, if I knew anything about Complus, I would take it, but I don't. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. Is... We had someone that knew about Complus. He doesn't work on Complus anywhere near it anymore. Yeah. When I talk to him, he's working in Node. <laughs> Completely a... the other end. So anyway, we should take that in three X and yes. Hopefully one day someone will come up and say, I understand Complus. I don't even know how to use it. Like, <laughs> it's like I don't know what I'd be looking at. It'd be a whole lot of learning. Not in the direction of learning that I need to be doing. Preserve case of sources. Uh, I didn't know we changed the names very often of the things that we ended up looking at on the source path, but I were probably not very careful about it. Um, yeah, if someone wanted to do it, I guess we could take it. It shouldn't break anything. Yeah, as long as it's, you know, asking for the source paths. I mean, we could put it in 3x. Someone wants to do the work to support shares that are case sensitive. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. We're, we're probably accidentally, we're probably uppercasing something somewhere to get them to be stable names. And then right. using that instead of their original name, which is just kind of like, ah, you know, we probably shouldn't do that. But it's like, no, it's not like we'll ever notice on Windows. So yeah, so we could go hunt down that and fix it. We take in tricks. It shouldn't break anything as long as they keep the upper casing in the right place and the the normal casing, the whatever casing, the, the original casing and wherever it was. So, yeah. yeah, I didn't know any of our uh, our upper casing or lower casing escaped. I didn't know we persisted anywhere where we'd get confused, but... I didn't think we did either, but... I Apparently we are. It wouldn't surprise me if somewhere... It's not, like, how would we know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's true. It's like, oh, look, we actually accessed that by a uppercase name, and nobody told us. But, cool, we ran Procmon and watched. Right, yeah, anyway. <laughs> yes. You don't do that? No. <laughs> no, not the build. A little bit noisy. Application is not launching even configured good in XML. The problem is in the final state launch application, it was working fine, but now the installer is not launching. Uh, this is a help request. Yeah. yeah, we need, yeah. No, this is a help request. If there's a bug, we can get the bug, but this is a, this doesn't work anymore. It used to work. Help us. Code didn't change unless you change the code. That's right. So, um, yeah, send them off to Wix users and, I think I close these as help dash request. I don't know what you resolve them as. I have been resolving them as support. Support. And that's probably better. Yeah, something like that. Anyway, support building a 64-bit bootstrapper. We've been kind of waiting for this to happen. Starper. Sorry, boot starper. Star I don't know how to say that. Anyway. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I have problems with typos in bootstrapper, too. It's not this one, but I have other. I don't know. I have. It's a really weird word to type that. Anyway, um, yes. Chainer is shorter. It is. Windows Server Core is becoming more popular, supposedly. So we probably should do this at some point. Yeah, although Server Core is very popular as a Hyper-V host, not so much as, you know, running its own thing. Yeah, but that doesn't mean you don't run software on there. I'm Absolutely, absolutely. And, yeah, you know. and it, it will become, I think it will become more more popular for... I hope money. this isn't too hard. We, we did ARM, but that's not 64-bit, so... Yeah, no. Oh, right. It already supported picking architectures. I think there's actually yeah. code in there that prevents it from doing it right now. I th um, yeah, right now, actually... If you are platform 64 it, I think it falls back to x86. Yeah, and that's in... I think that's in the compiler. It's, it's In the compiler? Not in the binder? Kind of... Mm, all right. uh, one of those. I think it's it's a little atypical. Um, yeah, how we because, normally do things. Right, because we purposely chose to ship a 32-bit XE as the 64-bit solution because that works best if you want both. Right. So this is a breaking change. If you had something, <laughs> if you're like, 
passing 64-bit, suddenly you're going to get a 64-bit bundle out of it, and it's going to start failing on all your 30-bit machines. You're going to be like, huh? What happened? Uh, that's interesting. Um, so is this hmm. more? Uh, that might be that might be a good enough reason. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, you know, if you actually if it actually had customer impact, it means that you did zero testing. So I, I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for that. But I think in general, I think in general, there's enough work involved because it's, it's not only the the engine; it's also going to be Wix standard BA, Volutal. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Yeah. I didn't think about those. So you're right. This is a much bigger item than I thought. I was like, oh, the engine yeah. should compile 64 bit. Haven't tried it. It will. Time, but it should. <laughs> it probably will. Yeah. I mean, and we 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 have some code in there that, that, you know, that's conditional based on being 64 bit. So I think we're we're in good shape for that. Yeah. Um, All right. Um, you you raise a good point. Yeah. I this is probably a fourth thing. So. Uh, yeah, so Tobias, the, standard BA using core. Yeah, because absolutely. No, the question is, will the uh, managed BA be used on? That's yeah. actually supported, though. Um, and, and actually, Tobias, there is there. It's weird. There there isn't Explorer, but all the UI stuff is actually on core. Yeah, yeah. I mean, or, they're still drawing GDI. I mean, they still draw stuff. Yeah. There there just isn't the Explorer and all the ancillary tools. Well, yes. The, the <laughs> device brings up that there does a console only, when it, and it does. It brings up a console, and that console is drawn, as far as I know, by GDI. So you can still draw controls. You just have to launch them. I guess they could rip the whole Windows subsystem out, but that seems a bit extreme. And <laughs> leaving only the console system in there. But I don't know. It'd be kind of cool to boot up server core and get confused whether you're running on Windows or Linux. <laughs> So yeah, this is going to be Volutal. Um, oh, 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 MBA. Yeah, can you put you? Can, I don't even. I mean, do people put managed code on server core? It's supported at least for the yeah last couple of versions, I think. Yeah, the, it like the seems like it's version. going to be more supported given the way they're changing the framework too. So mm. right. yes, drop it in. No, no just run it. So. Oh well, yeah. Although in that case, you're well. In that case, managed BA itself needs some work. Um, the different different thing, but you can get managed code on. The, oh right, because then the CLR isn't even installed. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, right. um, <laughs> although that's not a concern yet. No, not yet. Um, yeah, this 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 is going to be a big. Yeah, I, I think this is big enough that I don't want it in 3x, even though we could probably do it without, you know, seriously hurting anyone. Oh, except the uh, people that were accidentally building a 64-bit bundle and suddenly get a 64-bit. That was my binder. not seriously hurting them. Yeah, okay. Not seriously. Okay. Right. It's just a flesh wound. Um, <laughs> sorry, I don't do accents. No, no, you don't. Um, I have no skill. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I was going to talk about how often I've recited Monty Python stuff that I can do a really bad Monty Python accent, but that's about it. Thank you for sparing us. All right, I think we're good here. Yes. Um, 4X, 4O. I think at least the engine and... Yeah, but and, nobody's doing yeah. it. All right. Uh, Well, so let, let me be clear. For 4.0, I think we need to resolve the breaking change. So that means the engine needs to support it, and the wherever that that swap is to force the use of x86 uh, even for right. x64. And, and you're saying so? Wix standard BA may not be available for you. Being a 60, you may have to write your own BA from scratch because we don't provide a 64-bit BA in 4.0. But at least the breaking change is in place. At least you can get burn in 64-bit. And all that, right? You may have to write a your own 64-bit BA because we didn't get around to doing all the other work for you. I, I think that would be MBA and all that possible. It would be acceptable to do that. 
well, it's better than, uh, you can't do anything. Exactly. <laughs> like, well, I don't want to write my own BA. I'm like, well. And, and truthfully, I don't, I, I, I'm more worried about managed BA stuff. The, the host of the MBA core, I'm, I'm actually paranoid about that. Um, I think, I don't think when it, I mean, Wix standard BA and the engine and Volutal even all already build for x86 and ARM. So I'm not really too concerned about, about adding x64 back, except, you know, your normal 64 bit porting stuff. Yep. All right. So I think you're right. So we can keep this bug for four breaking changes, open another bug for the other things, and put in case they don't, I don't know. How about we just put them all together, and then depending on what we actually get done in four. Yeah, we can we just slip, can, the, we can, slip the bug. Right. We can, I don't typically like splitting bugs, but it'll, it's probably the right thing to do in this case. And thank you for opening this as a feature, not a bug. Makes me happy. All right. Oh, yeah. Carrying on. Burn does not end set NT personal suite built-in variable. Oh. Yeah, this is really. This is this is you know, no. this is kind of sad actually. The we're looking at a mask and we're <laughs> we got the mask wrong. Well, yeah, we say does this mask equal you know? We're looking at the value instead of looking at the bits. It's kind of sad. Ah. Uh -huh. uh. Good That's one of those that, that yeah. shouldn't that That's shouldn't like, happen. That bug? Oh, seriously? Um, and, and those zombie hunters that were out there, the the zombie Sean is now gone. Sorry. Just. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we should take this. Uh, I <laughs> technically speaking would be a breaking change, but it didn't work before, so now it would start working. Yeah. Um, presumably, you had issues if you were counting on it working, and it wasn't like this guy. Yeah, this might be the first person to try it. Yeah. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, people found it and didn't open a bug. Um, well, that happens. So, 310 and... Yeah, three, I'll, I'll take this one in 310. Or maybe Sean um, will take it. He's like, oh, that'd be easy. Yeah, whatever. There we go. Yeah, whatever. I'm just poking at Sean because he has the ability to say something. I'll let Bob take it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Wix NetFX extension should include older package groups. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Tell him to go talk to Wix devs. We'd be happy to have him contribute Wix 3.5 SP1 and all, or NetFX 3.5 SP1 and all that kind of good stuff. Oh, I don't want to go too much before that. Yeah, well, there will be the... Uh, actually, now that I think about it, it's going to be challenging. This is not going to be trivial oh. because of Windows 8 and the yeah, way that right. you turn it on there. So anyway, non-trivial, but I'm I'm down with it. So let's pop it in 3X and tell the guy that, yeah, if you want to do this, jump on Wix devs or read the Wix development list, and we can happy to have him do it. Um, otherwise, I've not run into many people doing 3.5, so I'm not going to get really excited about doing this. I think this is the Carter guy who already sent a, something on Wix does about this. Oh. Or, or about an assignment agreement. This is, this is an E. Young, so. Eric. Yeah, I think that, yeah, I agree. I think that's in. All right, well, uh, I anyway, I would send that and see where it wants to go just so they can run it down for reals. So add a link, say yes, when we can put that in 3X. Yes? Yeah, sure, it's additive. Wix variable still pointing to Wix 3.8 installation. So I've been getting a lot of this. Have you? Um, See, and, I, I, and everybody's getting resolved by rebooting. It's the Windows installer is not, or Windows, somebody oh. is no longer updating the environment variable on the initial install. And oh, I don't, I, it's getting, it's worse than it used to be. It used to happen every once in a while, now it's happening a lot. Hmm. Well, this is what happens when software goes into sustained engineering. I don't know. Um, 2014, so, so, yeah, okay, fine. So, it, wait. Is it that they have Visual Studio open while they're installing it? I mean, do they just have to restart Visual Studio? It's possible, but there's any number of things. All I know is that, in, in my case, 
all the people that have complained about this to Fire Giant have all been. Uh, I I think actually logging off will do it too, but like, yeah, that makes sense. If you restart, it will be fine, and they restart and they all come back going, "You're right," and we're like, "Yeah, it sucks," and I don't know what we do, what more we do. So anyway, I do not believe this is a real. Well, I believe it's a real issue. I believe the answer, unfortunately, is restart your machine to get Windows to wake up. Yes. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Is this something we can, we could fix with a, what is it, setting change message? That Windows Store is supposed to send that. Yeah. Well, sorry. So, so my question is, are they not doing it correctly? Is this something we could, you know, double pump and that'll that'll take care of the problem? I don't even know if environment variables are are one of the things that is supposed to trigger this. Uh, my understanding is that environment variables were supposed to trigger all your things to be, re uh, it, environment to be updated. Now, like command.exe won't pick it up right away. Yeah. And, um, and, and of course, a process already open does not get their environment, uh, environment block redone, so you do have to close the processes if they're open. Right. Um, uh, Jacob, this is the Wix system environment variable. And welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Um, user vars and system vars. Yeah, there are, there is a difference, but Windows Store is supposed to set them and then tell everybody that they've been set, and then you do have to restart the processes that had them open. But even that, we found starting like a new command shell doesn't kick it. So That's I, bad. I, That's I, bad. I know. It's, it's It's actually interesting because I, I didn't... Well, I guess I don't know how the environment variables are supposed to work. Um, bummer. I don't know what to do, what more to do. Other than, you know, like, like Phil said, hey, restart is necessary. You're like, really? Every time? Well, maybe. I mean, we could add code at the end of the BA that looks and sees if the environment variable is wrong. No, that won't work because it won't get refreshed. It would have. We could start yeah. a process <laughs> oh, that <man>. returns <laughs> whether the environment variable is set or not, and then have the BA get the return value and then say whether a restart is necessary or not. No, no, we don't even have to do that. We we write the exe that checks the environment variable, and oh man, if it's not set, it returns thirty ten. Oh man. Oh, you're right, and put it in the chain. Yeah, that way you don't even have to muck around in the ba. Oh, how smart, Bob! Way to use the oh. burn the right way. Um, Kinda. I still feel dirty though. <laughs> I I don't really like the idea of requiring. A, I don't know. Especially, Especially if you're not a using logout it. would do it. Yeah, I think logout does it. I I haven't verified that in a while, but for some reason my memory says that works. Have you tried restarting Explorer? No, not tried that. I mean, that's something we could do, I guess, right? Yeah. But I don't... I, yeah, anyway. So what do we want to do with this? We haven't got many people complaining about it. So it's not that rampant, or the Wix environment variable is not used that much. It's, it's common for people to point to you know, SDK stuff. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it makes sense to use it, but maybe people aren't using it as much. Um, Maybe we should start releasing Wix releases on the Monday before Patch Tuesday. Ooh. We can align with Patch Tuesday. Yeah. You have to restart your machine anyway. Um, here's your Wix update. Here's your patch update. Yay! Reboot your machine. Everything works. No. Um, 
I don't know what to do with this bug. Uh, yeah, me either. Um, I, I guess I'd like to leave it open just to see if if the uh, yeah, what do you call it? Log files. If, if, if the log files show that we're we're doing things correctly, I I tried to repro and, and couldn't, but I noticed in on my machine that the variable wasn't set at all. So mm. after the upgrade, so I I'm a little that's, mm. that's not right. Yeah, so uh, there might be something there. That's why I asked for logs. All right. Well, uh, happy to keep it in 310 if you want and hunt it down for now until we get to a better place. Yeah. All right, yeah, I so think that makes sense. 2014. This, is, this seems like, how is this the good way of doing? Like, this is just all backwards. Like, the other way is the best way to sort numbers. 2014, this is what? Well, no, that, no, the date is wrong because that would be oh. September 17th. Yes, but that was before this bug was open. Yes. So, so this must be 11-9, but that would only have been two days. I'm, no. I, oh, I see. I My assumption it was, it was European, but um, yeah. All right, who knows when this guy's back? <laughs> All right, so 310 and who you want to give it to? Uh, I'll take it just to see if we can get more data. Okay. Need more detail and docs about customizing Wix standard BA for burn. I agree. Me too. Oh, wait, but it's not a bug. It's not a bug. So, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> so, how about we make that uh, feature request and put it in 3x? That is my thinking, too. All right. Give more useful error messages when burn fails low theme controls. I do generally agree with this. This this has been kind of a pain. I don't have a good answer for this. It's kind of like it's the it's the whole thing. How many errors do you want out of the util kind of thing? And do you do some sort of callback so you can get you know error info out of it? I think part of the problem is none of the de util messages get to the log. That too. I mean, you can actually set it such that they do. Um, if uh, at compile time, you can say set the du to logging such that it does log, but then you get a whole lot of noise. The problem is that if you do that, then you get a lot of things that you don't want to be considered errors. Well, I mean, with Wix standard BA, it's not really. It's our choice about that, right? That's true. We could in we could in Wix standard BA route all du to errors to the log file, but my concern is that we're going to get a lot of noise in the log file, and people are like, hey, look, it erred! And it's like, no, that's not an error, that's just the util telling us it didn't find the file, and then we made a decision later to do something else. There, that is unfortunately a real a real issue. Oh, yes, it is. If something says error, game over. people just get into a, a tizzy about it. And, and and I try to, you know, I, I, I used to put you know, continuing at the end, and now you have to put something at the front so that they don't just stop at error. Right. It's like, you have to turn it into a warning or something. Um, Jacob, I think warnings would be almost as bad. Same thing. It's just they, oh, this isn't normal. This isn't a happy, yeah. happy face. You have to say something face. like ignoring error, blah, because blah. And you're like, oh, okay, so this, is, this error happened, but they didn't care, and they continued. Ignoring issue. Yeah. So Jake is like, hey, we could do output debug string here, but that won't... Output debug string is really slow, but in errors, I guess it wouldn't matter. But And we do in debug mode. That's not the easiest way to debug this. I don't. I agree, we need something here. I don't know what it is. Because it's actually a real problem, like uh, theme viewer. If you're using theme viewer to edit your uh, theme, and then you, you break something, Theme viewer just goes blank, and you're like, oh, I guess my theme's wrong. <laughs> well. Like, hmm, bummer. I guess I'll, I'll look into that. But yeah, theme mutal is, is, is an example, though. I think the error messages you get out of it are probably sufficient to track it down, but they don't show up in the log. It, the theme right. mutal messages don't. That's right. So That's what I'm saying. It might, it might make sense to have some kind of uh, I guess it's not a it's not level because we already have that 
kind of I don't know. We need something more, I think, to to yeah, say. It could be a feature that we add to the DUTIL error infrastructure that we do something such that every DUTIL file gets, you know, identifier. Yeah, it's on fly. And then you can then you can hook up a callback and say, you know, I'd like to filter out or I'd like errors from this file. And so you can then tell DUTIL, here's my global error callback. Much like um, Exodon root failure is inside yeah. DUTIL. Right. Um, you can hook up your own Exodon root failure kind of, or Exodon failure hookup. So it'd be one more check if statement in every error case, but that probably is not a big deal um, because you're case. already in an error case. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that. Um, that's probably the thing to do. It's an interesting uh, and invisible DUTIL massive change to DUTIL. Yeah. Because all the XFI failures would have to take. Well, no, you probably could get away with it with some macro trickery at the top of, like, theme util could have the theme util number at the top of it that we okay, could pass yeah. to all Exxon failure macro such that if it's defined, if defined, then allow the callback. Yeah, that's probably the way to do it. And yep. then enhance the Exxon failure macro system to be able to call into that with callbacks, and that's probably the way to do it. It's actually kind of a cool thing if you wanted to understand DUTIL. Um, you'll, you'll get a much better feel for the structure of DUTIL. It's probably the thing to do. Because I expect the error messages from DUTIL are actually really good once you get them. And if they're not, we should fix them. But yes, I think right. they're probably, they're, in general, they're probably pretty good. The problem is, of course, when you use it as a lib, you don't, it's, you don't get the option of getting them anymore. Yeah, well, yeah, so Jacob, the you know, you could do a VV switch, but the problem is you have to get something hooked into the DU to lib up front to allow you to then have a callback that could then pay attention to the VV switch to then say stuff. So yeah. Alright, well I think that's the the thing. I think this is a good idea. Um, it's actually been one for a, I've had for a long time of how to solve this and that's probably something like that is probably the way to do it. I don't know, where do you want to stick it? 3X? Uh, I'm okay with that for now. Uh, I suspect it's too big to, to do in 3. Well, if it's too big to do in 3, then let's put it in 4 and call it good. Alright, let's do that. Okay. I, I think, yeah, I mean, it, it, I agree in general Oh, 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 yeah, all the DUTIL changes. Yeah, you're probably right. That's probably a little scary, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. It could be done in a mostly safe way, but, mm, yeah. <sighs> it's an interesting thought. All right, Forex. Version strength uh, portion was too short or too long. Oh, this is funny. A light zero one. Oh, that's not good. No, oh. yeah. Oh, oh, man, this is actually really, it's wow. really bad. Wow. So basically, you have this comes back to something we we talked about in three nine where uh, what was it? Oh, someone was using you know like one dot o dot o dot seventy five thousand nine hundred and ten, and that crashed because that's obviously you know, not going to fit in a, in a yeah. keyword. Mm -hmm. uh, but MSI ignores it, so it's semi legal. In this case. They have a five-part version number, 1.0.0.0. Whatever. Well, y yes, Jacob. They should have only four parts, but they don't. It turns out you can, if you don't use Wix to build your MSIs, you can put in some cr anything. I think anything that's after. Strange. <laughs> uh, that's exactly right. I th I really do think that you can. I'm gonna put start in putting anything. Rob was here after all my version numbers. <laughs> I, I really do want to try it now. Um, well, not the not the Rob was here part, but I I really do think that that yeah exactly Jacob after after the th the first three parts, well for product version after the first three parts, everything else is ignored. I, I suspect. All right, so maybe. we shouldn't crash, and we should at least throw the stuff away. So then the question is, do we let them fix it on the MSI package element? Right. Yeah. Two parts. Um, Ugh. 
the the I know the extra the well it's like all the other force attributes we have. But it's not going to matter. No, on an MSI pack, it's not going to matter, right? We're just going to toss the stuff. MSI will barf if it has bad stuff in the anyway, right? So we're just going to go. You had a version number that we don't understand. Here's your string. Uh, we kept this much of it. Have a nice day. Well, it's the keeping that much of it that's problematic. Uh, because we can't parse it at all? We can't parse it at all with using the version class. Well, so we'll have to write a little bit extra parsing. It's not that hard to parse a version number. A I, regex will do it pretty quickly. Or sorry, we can trim it down to here. If this ma Take the part that matches this regex. We'll take that part. Everything else, toss it. Here's right. what we gave you as your version number. Have a nice day. And it's not going to matter because in the end... Burn is only going to care about the parts that MSI would care about, and we're a little smarter about that fourth part version for minor upgrades, right. essentially. And they've lost the ability to do minor upgrades, which who knows what the hell they've done anyway. So. Well, yeah, and in this case, the fifth part was where they put the build number, and it was going to get ignored no matter what. So. That's right. So I'm just like, yeah, cool, you get zero. And they're like, well, we want this. I'm like, well, then fix your version number. Yeah. <sighs> yes. So I think the answer is we should not crash. We should not crash anyway because right. that, that's a really, like, hey, something went wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, that one was bad. That was... Uh... All of them are bad. Light 001 should never happen. I need to add the message to... Um, I need to add the message to uh, to uh, the messaging system such that it, if you hit a light 001, it says, you have hit an internal failure. We're very sorry. You need to go find this. Yeah, basically the thing that helped this guy get this log file, because in MS Build it hides all this extra information. Yes, I know. Unless I could find a way to get it to all be part of it, but if you want it on separate lines, MS Build, ignore it. Maybe I could put error in front of everything? Maybe this gigantic error? <laughs> I, see I don't that. know. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, that. Next they'll want 1.a.2.b.001. Well, fortunately, the Windows installer will croak on that. Jacob, so we don't have to support that one. Oh, All right, God. So, this is semantic versioning. This is what's next. Well, if, if we need to support semantic versioning because it's real, we could do that, but nothing in the Windows ecosystem does that except, I think, NuGet. I think they're the only one yeah. in the window, in, in anything large. Assemblies don't do it. File versions, I mean, nothing in Windows does that. I still don't know why. It's like, here, let's do this. I'm like, it doesn't get you anything. And I still haven't written that blog post. Anyway. <sighs> anyway, it just makes things more complicated. So, we should fix this because these are always bad. Uh, absolutely agree. Um, cool. I think the second part is, well, we can easily fix the crash. The second part is, you know, recover, you know, do a best effort recovery of, ooh, I'm going to write that one down. Best effort recovery of Whatever we can get from the version number. Um, no, we have you know, to do that because we have to get some version out of them. We have to get part of the MSI, the version that MSI will understand. We have to do that because they have an MSI that's working. It's it's goofy that it works, but it works. So we need to recover at least three parts of the version that we can't. And if they put strings after that, then we're like, hey, here's the version number we got for you. We know MSI, and and you know. We did no worse than MSI did. We ignored the rest of it, but that's still really goofy. Stop doing that. Yes. And and then that's a warning. Woo! Fun feature there. And would be great to have in 310, I suppose. It's not breaking. It would. Because, yeah, <laughs> you're already broken. So... And then this guy would be all good because he'd be able to install and everything would work as well as it's going to work anyway. Cool. Yes. All right. All right. We're going to move ahead as Bob figures out how to type all that stuff. Burn engine deletes cache package incorrectly. Ooh. Oh, update bundle. Oh. Check goes a reboot. Be pay, uh, force reboot. Okay. The resumption. Resumption? Uh, is that a word, Bob? I suppose. Resumption? It doesn't sound right, does it? I'm looking it up. Resumption. The act of resuming. All right. The update bundle fails after the reboot. It appears the engine the original one clears out the package cache that holds the update bundle as it exits for the reboot. 
So I think what's happening here is their bundle is all compressed. So yep. they're, they're doing the update stuff. So it gets yep. into the user package cache and then runs the first time there. And then they install one MSI and reboot. And then when they reboot, they're running from the bundle inside the machine package cache, which doesn't have the attached container anymore. Right. And so now they don't have their other two packages to install. But but that shouldn't be a problem because they should have cached everything before restarting, uh, unless they do parallel. Yeah, so I'm, I'm guessing they're not caching their yeah, stuff. You, you can't, if you do a force restart, you can't you can't abort. You cannot. You cannot kick the force restart until you finish caching. Otherwise, you can get in a situation like this. You can get it on like uh, I think Windows Server is the one where if you download, you know, if you go to the internet or whatever, and you download the package and you put it in like temp folder or whatever, and then you install it, the same thing will happen because uh, Windows Server will nuke your temp drive when after when you shut down and when you I think by default and come back, you'd have the exact same thing. I think like that's what it sounds like. I don't think that the update bundle is. I mean, the update bundle is exasperating the problem that they already have, which is should they have a force restart and should their bundle disappear between the time? And since the user controls where that goes, uh, they're screwed. So that's probably, I mean, that is definitely the problem. Yeah, so that's the problem. They should have cached everything before they force rebooted. Right. I'm thinking maybe there's a feature here to be able to cache the attached container, because I don't think you can really do that right now. Yeah, but well, I mean, why? Like, you, to have a the, a full source of all your stuff like duplicated of the package cache again? Wait, how's that different from caching non-attached, detached content payloads? Right. Well. The, how is that different than caching? Sorry, you're saying the packages from an attached container would be cached. That's right. Okay. So, uh, you know, caching the attached container just means you're duplicating all the stuff that you already cached. Okay. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, we could. We'll take even more space that you won't. People, really people already it. complain about. It. Yeah. So it's like, that's not. I mean, that's not the long term. The solution is that they need to prompt and then go back and get their original. Bu oh, but of course it's an update. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is even harder to get a hold of the original. Um, actually, I have, I have a question. That looks weird to me. The uh, fifth line down, package cache, and then there's a bundle ID, but there's no backslash. Here? One up. Oh, you're oh, right. They both show it, actually. That's not right either. I'm wondering if there's if that's related or the cause. Yeah, that's not good either. I still think that I well. But it launched it. It launched it from the new one. Yeah, there's a custom BA. So there, Jake was right. There's a lot of questions about that. But and not enough logging, I think. It'd be interesting to see. It'd, it'd be interesting to see what the um, what the log shows from after the restart. Like, is it actually launching the update? Or for, no, from before. This is after the restart. We want the one from before the restart. Right. I'm. I'm. Sorry. Actually, I, if we saw the cache log, we could. We if if we had the full log for after restart, we'd know whether it detected that the packages were already cached or not. For right, example. Right. Right. Shall we start there? Um. At this point, we don't necessarily think this is a bundle bug. Well, there might, but. This needs to go back and have discussion, and then we should bring it back if it's a bug. Because, well, uh, it's this is right. This is the, what he's describing is correct. This is the behavior of burn, and.
And the way to solve a force reboot is that you need to have your packages cached. Otherwise, you may not be around when you come back. Just truth. Well, but if 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 they've already gotten, as I understand the bug, they've already applied something, right? Yeah, so, and you could get that with parallel cache. The engine wouldn't prevent you from shutting down while caching is still going on? No. And that's a good thing, apparently. <laughs> well, if, what happens if you cancel? <laughs> or you're like, suspend. Or, I mean, there could be a number of things. Like, the engine does not prevent you from... The engine does not force you to finish your caching once you start it. Yeah. You could say that the engine should not allow you to force re it should not allow you to force restart until your caching is complete. But that's that means that we have to know which one of those packages you're going to need after you restart, and that you're not downloading them from the internet, which could resume fine, not from an attached container. I mean, it basically turns into this is only a problem if you have an attached container and you've done this and the you know and you have force reboot and you're doing a parallel cache and install and all those things. That's the scenario you get to. And granted, we probably should document the fact that if you have an attached container and you're doing parallel, then do not allow your restart to happen until your caching is complete. We probably haven't put that warning sign anywhere and this guy's, you know, falling off the cliff like, hey, help me. Does that make sense? Like, that's the... It's a problem with attached containers in general. Like, cool, you're going to have to be able to go back and find your original bundle somehow. Well, no. I mean, that's not going to work because of the whole temp drive problem, right? Or or go back to the Internet and download it again. But yes. Well, I mean, I mean if this is the problem with attached containers where the burn can't go and get them for you. Unless... Like you know, like Sean said, we carry the attached container with the bundle, <laughs> or cache it all. And you're like, cool. Should you need this, it'll be here. All however many, you know, hundreds of megabytes, whatever, you know, four terabytes. I think is what we support. It could be, or small. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. Caching the packages should be enough. So, uh, what? This is a question back. You know. Well, at a certain level, I. We don't exactly have enough information to know if parallel cache is on because we don't have that. We right. don't know if the package – well, the packages must not be cached. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, package test.exe, 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 which – yeah, this isn't sh – this is just asking for the attached container. I would have thought we would have had something saying which packages we were asking for before we prompted for this, but maybe not. I don't remember the logging here. I, I feel like this is a little bit sanitized. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's possible. Yes. And so I'm just I'm struggling with all the ways through all of this, which I think is the same thing Jacob said, which is there's a custom BA here. We don't have the before log, the after log. I mean, we're kind of floating around in bits and pieces of information. Thus, this behavior, the way that I can guess that this behavior happens, which is ones that I've seen in the past when you have a force reboot, is that the package cache was not completed and you have a force restart. Bad things can happen to you when you come back because you're not going to be in a complete state. And I don't know if there's something the engine could do. We probably could figure it out in the engine, but I... We probably could figure out, oh, these are all from, let's go get all of your attached packages that you want before you restart, because your bundle might disappear. <sighs> you guys sound unimpressed. Uh, this is all deep voodoo at this point for me, so... I'd like to know the update bundle he's talking about, bundle V2 from some man thing. Now, I bet this is self-updates. This is this is self-updates. Um, because I think it launched from the per-user cache and then gets deleted. I mean, the they, they would see this problem normally if they deleted their bundle after uh, before hitting the restart. And they're like, well, why would we ever do that, right? Because we might need it after they start. And the answer is because it could be deleted, depending on where you put it, during the restart process. 
like in the temp folder. You, you can set your temp folder to get cleaned out on every restart. Or the user profile can actually be set, I think, in Active Directory to always get clean and stuff like that every restart. But uh, So, you know, normal testing, they probably don't see this because they're not hitting that. Where the update case, it's like, oh, cool, we're doing an update. We've got the new guy launched. Oh, he's launched, and when he's done, when that process exits, we delete him. Um... And then there's something that Jacob hit this last week about, yeah, but that the update per user package is the same as the existing bundle, not the new bundle. Right. But that would make this thing per user, right? That's possible too. Anyway, we're missing information here. So do we just want to ask for logs? Uh, yeah, there's a, Sounds like we're grasping at straws as to cause without. All right, so let's let's do before and after logs, and let's ask about parallel cache being turned on. That should do it. I don't know that the logs say anything about parallel cache, although we probably can tell from the logs anyway. Yeah. So probably don't need that. All right. In the end, I, I'm going to put the stake in the ground and you know people can take wagers on it. My bet this is going to turn into parallel cache and they are not wait they have a force restart and they're not waiting for caching to complete before taking the force restart, which is admittedly not well documented as something you have to do, mostly because force restart is really bad, but and, you know we forget about that. My bet is that he's actually only trying to install the one package, and then he's going to try to install the other packages on reboot. So he's not even trying to cache them. That's possible, That's too. It's at that point, then, well, then he's going to have that problem. But the reboot wouldn't matter in that case, because even in that case, the update would delete the new one, and then later on when he goes and starts another install, he... You know, he he would have that problem anyway. I guess is what I'm saying, right? Because if you right. if he doesn't install the whole bundle, he's going to get to a point where it's like, cool, your bundle doesn't exist anymore. You need to have a source prompt that tells the user, user, please go get this bundle from somewhere. And it's tricky because it's an updated bundle, which means you need to have something the user can go to the internet and say, oh, where do I get this bundle from? Like you know how Wix, we have the list of all the version numbers <laughs> up there. Although I guess if you had a really old yeah, but then you'd, yeah, I guess if you updated to a bundle in Wix that was like, you know, a few weeks old, and then we're trying to install it, and it prompted, and you went to the website, and it had rolled off, <laughs> you'd be like, hey, how do I pick the one that it's asking for? Yeah, it's, this is a challenging thing with attached containers. It's just a challenging thing with attached containers. Honestly, the answer is you're kind of screwed in this case, much like you are with almost all Windows installer source prompts, you just need to go back, download the bundle, and launch it. And then everything will get sorted out, whether it's an upgrade or whether it finishes your install that you don't have complete on your machine, unfortunately. And I don't know how to make that better. I'd be open to ideas on how to make that better. Beyond caching the entire attached container so that we take up all that this space, too. <laughs> age it out, we'll keep the attached container for a while, for a few days, and then after, or a few weeks, and then after that we start deleting them? I don't know. <laughs> I got nothing on that. Alright, we're going to do this. These last few here, real quick. Sure. Bob's like, I don't care anymore. Let's just do it. That's stuff. I create a solution. Set copy local. Then I did this, and it didn't work. This is not a Bug, this is go get help. We've had discussions about this. John Cooper would be here telling us, it works for me. I do this all the time. Anyway. So, fine. We'll go back and forth with this bug a little bit. Well, I've already done it. Uh, okay. oh, I mean, oh, is this what this is here? Uh, well, no. <laughs> the problem is I asked for diagnostic logs of the custom action project, and... I can't. Uh, <clears throat> I can't exactly tell because of the formatting. Um, Must be this. But 
Yeah, um, I can't. I can't tell what the actual diff is, but the title changed. Um, because he added when solution is built from. Yeah, Jacob, I've done that too. The problem is that not having an easy way to do an attachment. It's now a multi-step process, and most people don't don't want to do it, including me. Um, but the title changed to say that it doesn't work from Visual Studio. I'm like, uh, okay, I'm out of ideas. Yeah, let's kick this bug back to the thing. All right, let's kick this back to the mailing list. This is I don't like this kind of stuff. We need to go figure out what the bug is, not it doesn't work. All right, great. Let's go have a discussion about that. And it's like, all right, cool. This is what happened. You're doing this wrong, or Wix is doing this wrong, and we'll sort that out. So, what, whatever that was, support, right? Yeah. Okay. Ah, I looked at this a little bit. Um, if you use the process name in the Wix restart code, which I don't know that I wrote. I don't think I wrote it, because I would have remembered this. Um, it, it does the whole enumerating process IDs based off names, so it takes a snapshot. And that snapshotting will not work. It's documented to have a, you know, it will return access denied if, you know, certain conditions are met, like I think different wind stations is used and stuff like that. So, yeah, that code is always going to fail in that case. The code does that. I um, thought Restart Manager let you work directly off it's of... It's not Restart Manager. This is a custom action code. That right, right. Here's your process name. Let me go get you all the process IDs for that process name. Why, do, why does custom action do that? I thought you I could, don't know. You could give Restart Manager a list of paths. You can give it a list of paths, but you can't give it a list of process names. Oh, oh, so this is like foo.exe? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, then... Basically, restart, you know, Wix extension, util extension, whatever, Wix register, restart, resource with the process name attribute has the potential of returning access denied and failing your install, which is, I think, busted. Like, it should not, it should at least log and go, well, <laughs> I tried, and I got access denied for reading all these process IDs, so we're not going to register anything with the Restart Manager. Have a good day. And then when your Restart Manager doesn't come up with the things, you're like, why didn't I catch these things? It would be, oh, because it failed. And you're like, oh, bummer. The, the, the... The restart foo in this custom action is not strong enough. Yeah. Anyway, so I think that's the fix to this code. Um, okay. Tell you what, I'll leave this one open. I can add that. You're like, well, I don't understand, but I wrote enough of the code. I think I can do that. Sorry, I was, uh, I'm distracted by plumbers. Are they waving at you? Are they asking you to come? No, no, no. They're just using some kind of power tool. In, instead of the sledgehammer from this morning, they're now up to power tools. So. Phil's asking, oh, Phil, you're here. He woke up. Wow, here we were talking about his bug, and suddenly he's like, and what happened? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have looked at the name of who opened it. <laughs> um, um, sorry, I keep calling you Phil. Is it Phil or Philip? Like, I'm, I'm so bad. I mean, when people type fill up, they probably don't. All right, fine. As long as you don't worry about it, then I won't. It's like when people call me anything but Rob, I'm always like, I don't know who you're talking to because I only have one name. <laughs> Where Bob, that is not at all true. Just for I, I have several. Yes, you do. <laughs> but we all call you Bob because I haven't run into another Bob for a while. Anyway, the fix is to go fix the custom action because the custom action is failing in a case where it probably should just be warning and then giving up because it's not going to be successful doing this, doing what it's doing, but it it's not vital to your install that it should cause your install to fail. It should just go, oh, I tried to do this. I couldn't. Here's a warning in the log. Have a nice day. So if you want to take that fix, Phil, you'd be, I'd be happy to point you at the code and you could do the fix and get it in the 3X. That's the fix. Pretty straightforward. All right. You know, he's going to sit there thinking about it. Add support for Visual Studio 2015. The new Visual Studio has arrived and not yet supported. Please add support wow. as soon as possible. I'm glad someone reminded me. Yeah, no kidding. Thank you. Yes, the uh, this the preview that came out yesterday is what I was waiting for. Um, I think I mentioned before I wasn't going to work with CTPs and stuff that 
were definitely going to ruin my machine. Um, but I'll work with a preview, which has only, you know, a probability of ruining my machine. Um, Aren't you going to put it in a virtual machine anyway? I, I can't believe you trust it enough to not put it in a virtual machine. Well, like I said, I'm... I'm you yeah, know, I live on the edge. That's right. All Gambling, right. drinking, doing drugs, and installing beta <laughs> Visual Studios. <laughs> <clears throat> These are all things that are likely to... You have so gambling well. and drugs in Michigan? <laughs> I thought you lived in the well, middle of nowhere. Oh, well, maybe, that, maybe that's where all the crystal meth comes from or whatever the... the thank you, thank you. The outside. <laughs> Sorry. I have I have very simplistic views of, like, drugs and stuff like that, mostly from Miami Vice with, you know, speedboats and, you know, palm trees and that kind of stuff. I, <laughs> I don't know anything about it. <laughs> and then the flip side of the, you know, yeah, all right. Well, got we got like we got like two inches of snow already, so Dude. you know we uh, we we need to we need we need our entertainment to get us through the long winter. So, <sighs> dude, it's cold here, but no snow. And Jacob's now gonna say, "I got five. All right, whatever." So yeah, we should do Visual Studio 2015. I can't believe we haven't done it already. What is wrong with us? Oh my gosh, what were we thinking? I'm, I'm waiting for my horrible. bonus. I, I, there, there's a huge part of me that you know, is like, yeah, thank you for your offer to help us get all this work done. I, we truly appreciate it. Sorry. It's very not much motivating for me at all. Anyway, yeah, I get that. Um, I actually have um, I actually have everything building. Sorry, not everything yet. Building with um, with Dev 14, VS 2015. Uh, I started the work yesterday, like I said I would. Um, I have the libraries building now, and all I'm doing now is working through the the breaking changes. We actually have a number of new errors from uh, from our code. New errors? That, that yeah. Were like, literally not there before. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, C Sharp and C++ both. New warnings in C++, and I'm, I just ran into a C-sharp error um, that didn't exist in Visual Studio 2013. So uh, that, proce that process is going. Next up, obviously, is Votive, um, and we'll see if we're going to if we're going to be able to continue. Our tradition of using the same version of Votive in, well, let's see, 2010, 2012, 2013, and now 2015. Oh, gosh, see if we can keep so. that going. So. Uh, yeah, me too, or three tenths, never going to ship. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, fine. Uh, so, yeah, we're not doing this in 3.9, um, but we will definitely do it in 3.10. Although, I'm happy if you want to close this bug and open another bug that doesn't make it feel like. You know, they don't care, but that's just me being petty. So that's neither here nor there. Um, and this could go in 3.10 if Phil wants to take it, and we can help him through the git foo to get to a place if that's what he wants to do. Um, yes, all right, let's do that. Let's give it to Phil. We'll give it to the guy to open the bug, put it in 3.10, and we can go for that. Um, I don't think it's a breaking change. I don't think anybody would expect it to. I don't think anybody would be happy with this behavior. Or rather, I don't think they're they're basing the successor install of their installation on the fact that this always fails when they can't get the process names for for restart manager. All right, cool. Three ten. Close this bug. Open a new bug that says, "Yeah, we're doing this in three ten. All right, because we're over, we're going to skip the uh, review of everything. We're just going to walk down here. Uh, yay! Three nine's finished. We already knew that. Uh, v three ten is open now. Bob already mentioned stuff that he's doing there with Visual Studio. Uh, Wix 4, that's where features should go first and then be backported to 3.10. Um, basically everything should be done to 4 and then move back to 3.10 if at all possible. And then Wix 4 timeline hasn't moved, but we're still kind of waiting to see how the end of this year goes and people discuss it and things like that. Um, I'd say we take questions and comments, but since we're almost 15 minutes over, I'm going to pretty much cut it tight unless something has like a burning thing that we must cover this week that cannot be covered next week or cover on the mailing list. 
I got a lot of bugs. What was that all about? We got some harder bugs too. I don't like that. Jacob wants to type something. He's thinking about it. Was that a lot of? I mean, that was a lot of bugs, and some of them were harder than usual, right, Bob? Like, or is that my imagination? Uh, it's been a while since we've had actual discussions. So. All right, Jacob. If you have a list of things to to think or talk about, let's get them on the mailing list, and then let's get them onto an agenda. So you know, you can send them to me like on a Friday or a Monday. And then I'll put them on the agenda, and then we'll plan to have them here. And or I'll look at how many bugs we have, and go, you know, probably not gonna make the agenda this week. But I'm hoping next week we have like no bugs, and so we could have lots of other things to talk about rather than having a five-minute meeting. Oh, and I asked on all right. So you're basically telling me that I'm just a little bit behind on my steps. So I will go fix that. If if anything, it might be a good thing to uh, call out Wix agenda meetings just for me. So I can see them like, oh, look, a Wix agenda meeting thing. Let's put that on the agenda. But clearly, like a mail that just says <laughs> this for the Wix agenda as opposed to lots of stuff. Oh, all right, cool. Did, this is an awesome list. I have not seen this list in mail yet. That must have just shown up like today or yesterday or something. Mm, no, I think it's there. No? All right. Some well, of them. Some of them. But, okay, but in this clear... This is clear. This is nice and clear. All right, cool. So yeah, good. We have some things. I will. I will save this. This is summary. They were in. All right, great. I will. I will start putting these on agenda items, and we'll work our way through them. And I'll. I'll look at them and figure out if we need to group them or do more stuff. So very good. Very good. Good stuff. Um. Long meeting, but that's okay. It happens, I guess, sometimes. It's been a while. Yeah, we started a little bugs. bit late. Oh yes, and then the whole recording thing not working when I got. That's this, right. Which all of you that are watching the recording going, "What do you mean the recording's been great?" <laughs> I hope. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> and we're not going to we'll get to the end, out. and they're all like, "Hey, where's the meeting for? Where's the recording for 47?" I'm going to be like, Arr! but no, I think it's all good. Uh, I think it's all good. I think we should allow updating your all source says it's expected. Yes, I. Do. I don't understand. I think Phil's talking to Jacob, and I'm just lost. So, um, on that note, since we're not going anywhere else, uh, Bob, anything? Sean, anything? I'm good. Nothing. All right. Sean's like nothing. Oh, mute. Sh nothing. Um, I I love that when you do that. Uh, and it gives you a chance to say. All right. All right. Simple question: Does three nine allow for custom controls on the options dialog tied to variables? Sean, do you know? You looked at that. Yeah, it well. does. You have to tie the name of the control to the variable. All right. Check boxes and radio button and edit boxes. Look at that! How cool is that? It actually seems like that should take us pretty far in general. I mean, if only we could figure out how to add extra pages, we'd be able to get pretty far with out a gigantic, huge system. So, anyway. That, um, that would mean adding wizard capability to uh, theme needle, which isn't an awful idea. Yeah, it's it's the yeah it's it's like theme needle or something you know whiz needle or whatever we want to call it right that uses theme needle, but <laughs> okay. whatever. I, I want to call it whiz needle. I'm going to do that now. <laughs> but just something that we can get that next crossover because it's close. It's just not there. Especially probably need to look in the. Do you have to create a dialogue in a special way to get the task buttons to work? The task buttons. Sorry, the, the big buttons that, you know, have big text on them and maybe an image. That came in Vista. Um, or can yeah, you create I that control think, independent? I yeah. think you can create that independently. All right. It's just with a message box and, and wizards, they're, like, trivial. They require work otherwise, I think. Yeah, well, we have to do a lot of work with theme mutal. I'm thinking, can we hide it at theme mutal such that you could say, theme, make this a task button thingy right, right, and right. have it all lined up and you're like cool look I can get this new style because yeah. I saw it somewhere and I'm like you know what this is kind of nice when you're not yeah. designing your UI to work on Windows XP yeah, uh, exactly <laughs> no that's yep so, anyway I've been doing some stuff with theme Util for a customer or I've been using it and I've been generally extremely happy with it um, and the power that it's given me with how little code I have to do but I'm coming up with little things to submit and I saw that Sean actually sent some stuff too, like radio buttons or something. So I was like, cool, because I need to add combo box, I think, which is missing. I don't know why it's missing, but it's missing. It's, right. it's missing because we never needed it. But it's like, cool, go add that and some good things and little stuff. It's actually, I'm really happy with it in general. It's like, 
It's not XAML, still XML, but it's not XAML, but it works really well. You just don't get the two-way syncing and all that. Anyway, enough babbling. There's good stuff all over the Wix tool set, in case you were wondering, those of you that haven't wandered around deeps in it, that isn't always documented. <laughs> surprise, surprise, right? Um, <laughs> shocking. So on that note, since I'm just babbling, I think we're all good here. This is awesome. We'll talk about the holidays next week, I think. Um, since then, we'll probably be closer to them. At least I'm making that up, because I don't actually know how close we are to um, uh, holidays. Does anybody? But in general... In the future, we will be closer to things that are in the future. So, yeah, you're not helpful. Yes, yeah, so just thinking that we only have a week before Thanksgiving next week, and since our meetings are on Thursdays and Thanksgiving, if I remember correctly, is always on a Thursday, we need to discuss whether we'll have people here. I need that. <laughs> so, so, so that was just a lead, so that I would explain it for the people that didn't know it, right? Yeah. And and you just have fun because it's you know uh, puts me in an exasperated spot too as well. Yep. Plus Christmas yep. shows up on a Thursday too. All right. So now that Bob has had his uh, fun for the day, uh, we're gonna send him off. Um, in fact, I think I can boot him and make him not a presenter, so he doesn't even need to say um, goodbye. There we go. Let's see. One more mute. There we go. Bye, Bob. Um, Sean. Sean, you get to do the honors. All right. I'm gonna say goodbye. Sean's gonna say goodbye, and we'll see you guys next week. Sean, take it away.